Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's great to see all your smiling faces out there excited to learn all about financial derivatives. So we're in the middle of a series here on structured financial products and today we're going to learn about CPPI which stands for Constant Proportion Portfolio Insurance. We're going to learn all about what that is, how it's structured, how it works and why people invest in it. Okay, so today we're going to learn all about CPPI. This is the second video I've done on structured products. If you watched my earlier video, the one where I uh, looked like a floating head because I wore um, all white clothes in this white background, um, you learned about what structured products are. So CPPI is the first example of a principal protected structured product. It was called Constant Proportion Portfolio Insurance, and these products involved investments with stop-loss strategies in place to preserve principle. If you don't know what a stop-loss is, I have a link to a video above where I explain different order types and that will explain what a stop loss is. Uh, hopefully you do understand it because you're kind of watching too advanced a video otherwise. Uh, so how does this work? Well instead of buying a zero coupon bond and some options exposure as you probably learned about in my last video on structured products which is linked to above, a portion of the investors funds were placed in a risky asset which would be liquidated if prices fell through a targeted tolerance level, at which point the money could be invested in a bond where it would grow back to the initially invested amount of money over the life of the product. So as you can see there, it works a little bit different to the products I explained last week, because what we're doing is we're straight away just investing the money in a risky asset. But if losses reach a certain level, we then have to give up and just sell out of that product and put all of the money into a bond so it'll grow back to the initial amount of money that we can then return to our customers. Let me know in the comments section below what you think of this approach and how it compares to the approach we talked about last week. So how does it work in practice? CPPI caps an amount that the portfolio is capable of losing before which all assets must be liquidated and shifted to a bond in order to ensure that it earns back the amount lost before the maturity date. The amount of acceptable loss will depend on market interest rate levels and the amount of time remaining to product maturity. Suppose an investor begins with a portfolio of $100,000 and it's determined that upon dropping to $90,000 the portfolio has to be converted 100% into bonds. The acceptable loss level is known as the bond floor and in this example it's $10,000. So once we lose $10,000 we just have to move everything into bonds. And it is the amount beyond which the CPPI portfolio should never fall in order to be able to ensure the notional guarantee at maturity. The investor's portfolio in a CPPI product begins by being invested in a risky asset in the amount of multiplier times bond floor. A multiplier is calculated based on an assessment of an investor's risk profile for a maximum one day loss. If it's decided that the most the risky asset is likely to lose is 25%, then the multiplier used is 1 over 25%, which gives us 4. In our example, CPPI will begin with multiplier times bond floor, which is 4 times $10,000 being invested in the risky asset, which equates to a 40% equity investment out of a $100,000 overall portfolio. The remaining 60% is put in a zero coupon bond on day one. CPPI at the outset allocates more of the investor's cash to a risky asset as compared to a structured product or a bond and call option strategy, which allocates the residual cash left over after fees and the cost of a zero coupon bond to a risky asset. A structured product might be structured as 90% investment in a zero coupon bond and 10% in a call option. For our example, the investor will make an initial investment in the risky asset equal to the multiplier times the bond floor and will invest the remainder in the zero coupon bond. As the portfolio value changes over time, the investor will rebalance. Timeframes for this rebalancing will vary widely. 
If the equity value grows over time, more money can be allocated to the risky asset while maintaining the same dollar portfolio floor. If the equity value falls over time, allocations to the risky asset will drop to maintain the dollar portfolio floor. The payoff of CPPI is somewhat similar to that of buying a call option, but it does not involve the use of derivatives. However, it's worth noting that trading in and out of the risky asset depending on its performance does bear a striking resemblance to dynamic hedging strategies. If you don't understand that concept, you should watch my videos on dynamic hedging, which I have linked to above. So that's it on CPPI. If you found the video helpful, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Tune in next week when we'll learn about structured product fees and where structured products can go wrong. See you then. Bye.